What are the best weapons in Remnant 2? After well over 600 hours in the game, with probably more than 50 plus Apocalypse campaign clears, I've come to be very familiar with all the different weapon types. And I've definitely found a few that I think shine far above others, while a couple feel very terrible. The idea of this video is to show you my opinions on these weapons, while also taking a look at some of the best ways that you guys can run them. To do this, let's first take a look at the build that I used to test each of the main weapons. Of course, we're going to be running Hunter and Gunslinger together as they provide the best boost to range damage, and they also buff the usability of each weapon to reload speed and fire rate. We're going to be using Trinkets to boost damage mainly, and then Enigma is the sidearm so I can clear smaller enemies easily. For your fourth and final ring, you want to switch it out depending on the gun. So, if you're running bows or fusion rifles, always use Archer's Crest. If you want a weapons mod to regen quicker, use Feyren's Sigil. If you have a single shot weapon that has no charge time, you want to use the Outcast Ring. And finally, throw on the Akari Warband for weapons that simply require a damage boost. If you utilize this build here, you can make use of every single main weapon in the game to great effect and still have them keep what I like to call good ease of use. So without further ado, let's rank every main weapon in Remnant 2 after the Awakened King DLC. The Rusty Lever Action is the uncontested worst weapon in the game. This is the item you start out with story-wise, and that's really all you need to know. It doesn't have a mod slot or a mutator slot, and has no crit chance or good weak spot bonus. You're going to use this to beat the tutorial and then switch out as fast as possible after. Easily an F tier weapon. Twisted Arbalist is a ricochet rifle. You load up one disc at a time and shoot the wall or ground as the projectile bounces off until it hits a target. Not really bad at all for clearing groups as it staggers well and again, you really can't miss your shots. Once you shoot a target with the disc, you can then activate the mod to call down a large sword that deals damage. The mod only works after you shoot the projectile from the gun and then does more stagger than anything else. Very low damage from both the mod and the main fire mode, with practically no mutator that gives it a good boost. Momentum isn't half bad if you're hitting a lot of enemies quickly, but other than that you just want something to boost the mod. Now the one exception to this weapon's lack of anything is when used with the mod boar. You can equip the bandit mutator on it and deal an infinite amount of damage by shooting boar. This however is only useful on the root nexus event, as if a target moves at all it is way too difficult to shoot boar, but definitely something to try with this weapon for just the sheer fun of it. Ultimately, an F tier weapon. Sagittarius is arguably the best bow in the game. By looking at only the numbers, it has the highest damage of all the bows, with the fastest draw time. With a sleek look, it's elegant, and equipping the supercharger mutator makes it very quick to throw out that high damage. But this is all overshadowed by two major flaws. Number one being that the mod attached to it called Starfall is easily the worst and most useless mod in the entire game. It looks amazing, creating this portal into the heavens that rains down explosive stars. But not only does it deal no damage whatsoever, it is very difficult to hit anything with if targets are moving. It also takes way longer to shoot out than it actually should. Also consider that the mod on the Crescent Moon bow is S tier and highly beneficial for damage and this bow becomes borderline useless. The mod is this weapon's only negative aspect, but it's so bad that it completely ruins the weapon altogether, F tier at best. Starkiller is a sniper with 5 rounds in its magazine. It has one of the best reloads in the game with relatively decent damage. This item feels very solid to use and can hold its own in many situations. It also has a mod that shoots out this black hole, sucking enemies in and then exploding with huge damage. With my time using the weapon, it's best used as a standard sniper, zooming in to hit rapid shots on your enemy's weak point. Unfortunately, it doesn't benefit greatly from really any mutator at all. Yeah, there are a lot of decent options, but nothing stands out to really specialize the gun in. Then you also have to consider its high mod cost for a mod that doesn't really work that well. It isn't even in the top 5 explosive mods in the game. Another one of these items that has a lot of things going for it, but simply spreads itself too thin. Basically just using the mod Helix or running Alpha Omega is far better for mod builds, and it's never going to outmatch the range damage of any other gun. F tier for sure. The crossbow is a one round crossbow that reloads after every shot. Best way to use this gun is with the corrosive rounds mod and bottom heavy mutator. 
you can fire it very, very quickly and almost guarantee crit on all your shots. When run this way, it's very reliable for damage and it actually feels very fun to use, popping a deadly bolt into your enemies and quickly reloading for the next opponent. The crossbow's main issue, though, is that that's it. Aside from this one method, there are no other good ways to use it, and it doesn't hit those really juicy numbers that other guns have access to. If you're looking to use it, then heck, this is very viable, but most of the time it isn't considered for dealing with bosses in an efficient manner. F tier. The Wrangler is your standard scout rifle. It fires one bullet at a time with a magazine size of 10. You can be steady and accurate with your shots or go in hot and heavy, getting out 10 bullets as quick as you can. There's not really a downside to this weapon while also having no major benefit. It's quite nice to have in dungeons so you can pick off enemies with ease, and it's reliable enough to work well on bosses. Hot Shot is the mob with fetid wounds as the mutator seems to be one of the best ways to run it right now for high crit chance. Not something I hardly ever use, but never a bad option. D tier. Ford Scattergun is essentially a pump shotgun. It gets seven bullets in the magazine and will pop out each round individually. This thing absolutely cooks, once again running hot shot with fetid wounds for the boost to crit chance. I mean, it does really, really high weak spot damage. It can stagger the heck out of even bosses. Each shot is guaranteed to at least push back enemies. Ideally, you're going to take the Concoction Tranquility font as to reduce the spread of the bullets and be much more accurate. Even this, however, isn't enough to fix the range issue. Horde Scattergun is a close-up monster. As for any amount of distance, you can go ahead and throw it away. As far as I can tell, Abomination over on Darude is this gun's best opponent, and you could quickly stagger him and get in those huge damage shots once you do so. Also, wow is the reload on this thing bad. Solid D tier option. The Repulsor is somewhat similar to the Scatter Gun, actually. It's a high-tech laser gun that fires five rounds very quickly. Another gun with an awful reload, but the mod is very interesting. You get three charges at a time, and using it completely freezes your opponent in place for four seconds. Once they come out, you deal much more damage to them with the Repulsor. This does not freeze bosses, but you do get the damage boost, granting you a shotgun that can fire off extremely high damage shots. Great for aggressive bosses that only give you a few seconds to let out your damage, and honestly a really fun option for dungeons as it gives you a few seconds to recuperate by freezing elites and their minions. Also, you can use this mod to freeze allies such as your co-op partners. This will make them practically invincible for 4 seconds. Both a funny way to troll people and a way to prevent their death if you see something coming that they don't. Extender is by far the best mutator for this gun as it boosts your ammo and reload speed, which this gun suffers from heavily. D tier. Aphelion is a cool looking weapon that shoots large energy waves. These can deal some solid damage if you have on momentum and they travel until they meet an object hitting through enemies as well. I really enjoyed this option for dungeons as it's a very low effort thing for damage. Specifically great in Lawsome as those guys have a very hard to hit weak spot and these can hit their heads as long as you're aimed at the right height. Aphelion also has a great mod that sends out a mini orb of energy. Shoot the orb and it explodes dealing loads of fire damage. Very cool idea overall, but not that practical as a gun. The main mode of fire runs out of ammo far too quickly and has a very painful reload. Then the mod is much too deadly to yourself or your team and just isn't that good of an explosive option. Excellent fire damage for sure and nice for quick free aim gameplay, however it's very very mid in boss fights and its corrupted version has a much better mod as well. D tier for sure. Savior is gonna get me a lot of comments of that, I'm sure. Because on the one hand, this weapon requires the most effort to get if you manage to beat veteran difficulty on hardcore characters. This thing looks very cool and can deal extremely high amounts of weak spot damage. Running with sequence shot makes it feel much better to use as well. But man, does this gun have some of the worst usability in the game. Basically, it's a fusion rifle that fires like a bow, meaning you do the same stuff to boost this gun that you do to the Crescent Moon, ultimately meaning Crescent Moon is just a better option every time. Savior reloads every six shots, and both have practically no reload at all, if you use them correctly. The mod is interesting as it imbues your shots with fire and weak spot hits shoot out fragments of fire to other enemies. So it has some potential as a burning gun alone, but there is seriously no way to make this gun feel good at all. The very slow reload speed, wonky fire rate as a bow fusion hybrid, just go run a bow and it'll deal the same amount of damage and feel more fun to mess with. Probably the most disappointing weapon on this list for me, if I'm going to be honest. C tier. 
Corrupted Aphelion fires several waves of energy instead of the one its original version does. Sadly, they lowered the crit chance and stagger on this version, so its main fire is ultimately worse than the original. Even with the momentum mutator, it just underperforms when it comes to ranged damage. But the mod is incredible. All you need to do is equip the Stone of Malevolence ring, and every time you use this mod, it's going to regen its own energy and your other gun's mod energy as well. All while sending out several orbs that explode, dealing loads of fire damage. Yeah, you could still harm yourself with this explosion, but being able to have unlimited mod energy at your fingertips, it's pretty darn strong. Pair this with Starshot or Corrupted Meridian, and you could easily clear Apocalypse, taking chunks out of boss's health at a time. Sadly, the only use for this weapon is as a mod regenerator, an explosive component, as its main fire has just dreadful damage, but still brings something very nice to the table. C tier. Corrupted Deceit is very similar to its brother if you're familiar with the regular gun. You can't deal weak spot damage at all unless you activate its mod and hit the enemy with the mod. Then, anytime you shoot the opponent, it's considered a weak spot or the best damage in the game. Now, the benefit to Corrupted Deceit is that it doesn't require a melee weapon to use and has pretty low mod cost, allowing you to more easily use the weak spot exploit if you aren't as fluid with using melee and range damage at the same time. And with Sequence Shot as the mutator, it shoots rapidly, so easy access to loads of damage, solid fire rate, and a nice mod. Well, then what's the issue? It's just a worse version of the original. You can't use Butcher's Fetish with this version, which is a huge boost to crit. You don't regen the mod energy as easily as Deceit can with this version, so it doesn't have the same loop effect. And ultimately, this version of the gun requires more of the user as it's much less reliable. You have to activate the mod, freeze the mod, then pull the mod back just to get the damage and regen the mod. Versus Deceit, which uses one melee swing, then you deal damage. So it's a lot more effort for a very similar and often worse result. C tier. The Royal Hunting Bow is like all the other bows in Remnant 2, except technically it deals the least amount of damage. Reason for it beating Sagittarius still is due to the having an open mod slot. Equipping Corrosive Rounds and the Sequence Shot Mutator makes it hit guaranteed crit, which is very reliable, obviously. Side note, not really sure what the devs were thinking with this Sequence Shot Mutator. Now that I've realized the potential it has, it's the only option to run on bows and fusion rifles that isn't Deceit. They basically made Supercharger almost useless. Anyway, this is just a very solid weapon. The damage really isn't that much lower than Sagittarius, but you get one of the best mods in the game. I felt like it had a lot of potential if you're looking for a non-boss weapon that could still be extremely strong. C tier. The Bulldog being one of my favorite weapons in Remnant 2 is as solid as you can get. Very high stagger, a decent amount of bullets for a shotgun, and amazing accuracy with surprising range. Equip Overflow to shoot faster and Extender to have more bullets, and it is amazing for dungeons. Something that will always put in work, require little effort to aim, and send enemies reeling. Also just so happens to be the best option for your good old friend, the Labyrinth Sentinel. The spread is perfect for hitting those cubes, and again, the amount of bullets feels just right. I call it the Old Reliable, and she never fails to get me out of a tough spot. C tier. The Coach Gun is a two-round shotgun. It fires fast and hits really frickin' hard. Running the Extender Mutator with Corrosive Rounds makes it hit about 4k damage and lets you reload it in an instant. And there really isn't much else to say about it. If weak spots are available, it blasts away and feels like a shotgun sniper mix. Sadly, the recoil is probably worse than it is on any other gun, making it much harder to aim. But really not a big deal since it has limited ammo. Really great for shotgun swap builds, and mainly a tool used by gunslingers, I would think. C tier. The Pulse Rifle is another extremely reliable weapon. It has everything going for it and can be used with pretty much any mod to great effect. I personally prefer Momentum or Fetid Wounds as a mutator, but you have tons of leeway with this one. Being one of the more challenging puzzle items to get, it's certainly worth the wait. The reload isn't bad at all, you have decent range, and it's quite precise. I think of this guy as a Wrangler and Black Maw hybrid. Use any of the elemental rounds like Shock, Acid, or Hotshot, and you really can't go wrong. Actually, this is a great weapon to run on status builds if you aren't using Sparkfire. It also doesn't hurt that it has one of the more interesting designs of any gun. B tier. 
The Huntmaster is the best overall sniper. It takes the high damage of the Widowmaker and gives you the extra ammo of the Starkiller. Paired up with any of the Hunter class skills, you're a marksman not to be trifled with. There really is no wrong answer when it comes to the different mutators and mods here, but Fetid Wounds is really good if you can freely customize a weapon. The best thing about this gun is that you don't have to reload after every bullet. The Widowmaker is a monster, but reloading each time you want to shoot makes aiming down sights somewhat pointless in prolonged encounters, and the stability on this makes it very easy to hit your shots. Of all the starting options, the Huntmaster might just be the top of the line option if you want high damage in both dungeons and boss fights. B tier. Spore Bloom is a high powered shotgun that hits harder than any weapon. With no buffs, it already gets large weak spot damage and plows down bosses. You can make hot swap builds with it or reduce the reticle size down to the smallest dot for sniper shotgun play. This weapon probably has the most potential to deal the highest damage in the game, especially if you're using Invader's Wormhole skill. However, to balance all this raw power, the gun has zero usability. You are forced to run the Slayer Mutator to up its reload or try and use the Provisioner Ring to have it do so over time. One bullet per shot also means there's no room for error. In dungeons, it's absolutely terrible as an option as groups have every advantage over you. I mean, it's great in boss fights because you hit the weak spot and hope the crit gets a huge number. With the bottom feeder mutator, it's pretty fun to get some absurd damage off in an instant, but that strategy is more of a gimmick and rarely works on the majority of bosses. Advantage, damage, disadvantage, usability. B tier. The Corrupted Merciless is really, really good. In fact, if you want to fight the Ravager or Annihilation, then this might be one of the best guns to do it with. As long as you have its mod active and hit all the shots as weak spots, it won't need to reload. The gun does it as you fire to keep you going. Now, this only works if you hit every shot as weak spot and the mod isn't active forever, but you can get bosses to half health as soon as you start to fight with the Abrasive Whetstone Amulet because the mod also applies bleed on your weak spot hits, letting you run battery as the mutator. This setup for the gun makes it hard to beat on large weak spot bosses. The main problem I have with it is it's completely unusable in any other situation. It doesn't do anything in dungeons as you can't get reliable weak spot hits and many, many bosses in this game do not show their weak spots all the time. Plus, when you accidentally mess up, this gun has yet another completely unreasonable reload speed. But don't sleep on this item because because when it's good for a situation, it is top dog for that situation, guaranteed. B tier. The Black Maw is your standard auto rifle. It does no more than that and it does no less. And that's perfectly fine. This gives you a very reliable gun with a nice reload speed to throw on any build that isn't specialized. Perfect for your first few runs or even your later ones when you're using melee and your sidearm more often. Particularly good with the overflow or corrosive rounds and I love the look it has when you use the Space Crabs mod. Classes don't matter, traits don't matter, the Black Maw will always be an option. B tier. The Bone Saw is one of the very few guns that has an overheat mechanic. It's an LMG that when you hold down the fire button shoots really quickly, but the more quickly you shoot it, the faster it overheats, and that means you can't deal damage for a significant amount of time. This automatically makes it way less of an option on many builds because it requires maybe one item to stop the overheat or just a little more attention paid to the reticle. Thankfully, the devs gave it a massive amount of bullets in each magazine, and when amped up, it does amazing damage. And in fact, it can often out DPS some of the better boss weapons in the game, especially since it's an automatic and they require much less effort to aim. Me personally, I think the Chicago Typewriter is often a better option just to avoid the overheat mechanic, but if you get used to it, the gun sounds mean and feels very nice in combat. Definitely one of the better guns for dungeons. B tier. Merciless is the automatic that everyone knows and loves. With high damage, automatic bleed on its bullets, and a cool red look, it is incredibly strong. Running momentum or fetid wounds grants you a lot of crit. Plus, you could run the twisting wounds for two stacks of bleed all the time. Not to mention, its mod has three charges that regen quickly and each fires a mega slug round that penetrates enemies and can deal weak spots. Not a lot of mods deal weak spots, so it has massive potential, and each enemy hit increases the damage to the next enemy if it goes through multiple. For mod spam, this is a really nice option, and the easy bleed makes Abrasive Whetstone very simple to use. Now here's the issue, reload speed. 
A lot of weapons in this game have such high damage that the devs balance them by killing the reload speed, so you can't use them with any class. And Merciless is the most egregious case in this game. For a weapon that's an automatic and gets bullets out quickly, it has the worst reload I have ever seen. In some instances, it can actually take five full seconds of you standing there to get the bullets back in the chamber. This kills its versatility and almost forces you to run Gunslinger in order to counter the downtime. Also, the weapon's bullets don't have a lot of speed on them. They sort of float their way into the enemy rather than instantly hitting them like regular bullets would, making it very easy to miss your target and waste ammo. Don't get me wrong, this is a very powerful item to have and there are a lot of advantages that it brings to the table, but the balancing they did to it is very, very extreme for sure. B tier. The Widowmaker is another one of my favorite weapons. First off, just take a look at the damage in the background. Very easy crit that cuts down bosses fast. Another advantage to this guy is the instant reload. You're basically going to be forced to run Slayer as the mutator to boost damage and reload speed. With the Outcast Ring, you could fire this very quickly and the stability makes aiming almost too easy. With a one-shot fast reloader like this, you can almost fire at will. Especially in fights like Annihilation where you have a large target to hit and need to dodge after every shot, by the time you're back up, you have that round chambered and can fire again. Thus creating a very simple combat loop of shoot, dodge, shoot where you almost ignore the reload altogether. The downside is that without Hunter and Gunslinger, it's basically a pointless weapon. Its main benefit comes from weak spot and fast reload, so almost no versatility, but it doesn't require weak spots to be that good and it's strong as heck. In a fight like this where the boss is one large target, you can't help but pinpoint him down with 5k after 5k. Also, a little bias as I liked this weapon in the first game too, A tier. The Sparkfire Shotgun is the single most versatile gun in Remnant 2, that being because it's one of two guns to automatically deal status damage. Its primary shots are going to deal burn, which can be applied over and over. If you equip Fetid Wounds and Corrosive Rounds, you get way more crit chance and can throw in the Krell Axe to have that as optimized as possible. The only downside to this gun is it runs out of ammo quickly and has really bad recoil. And both of these issues are pretty darn severe, but thankfully you can fix them easily in your traits. Also considering that Ritualist is extremely good and can be used in many ways, that class just promotes the Sparkfire even more. Now unfortunately, I don't really like the sound it makes when it hits enemies. The burn on the shots gives it a very unsatisfying sound compared to the nice thud other shotguns have. However, that's a very minor nitpick and ultimately it feels great in every situation. A tier. The Chicago Typewriter is one of my favorite automatics in the game. Basically being a Tommy gun, it fires bullets out quickly and still manages to have a better reload than Merciless. With corrosive rounds and momentum on, you almost have guaranteed crit, letting you use like Sapphire Dreamstone for cooldown, Burden of the Gambler for a decent ranged option, mod builds, or maxing out its damage too. The gun works and feels very nice for ad clear in and out of boss fights. No, not really the best boss killer in the world on every build, simply due to lower damage overall, but it holds its own and can be used almost freely. 80 bullets in a magazine is never something to take for granted. It's also a mini LMG with no overheat mechanic, like I mentioned earlier, which I really find useful when build crafting. A tier. Nightfall is amazing. This is a scout rifle that has low ammo, all until you use its mod and it becomes fully automatic, shoots faster, life steals, and turns you into a semi-invisible tank, making you harder to hit. Probably the most powerful mod in the game, just from the sheer amount of buffs that it offers. You must run Favor and Sigil to get the mod back faster, and you must run Battery for weak spots and Momentum for non-weak spots, but something doesn't necessarily need to be versatile for it to be really good. This is one of the few boss guns that deals amazing damage with and without easy weak spots, immediately standing out to me. Not to mention that the lifesteal on the mod grants way more survivability than most other weapons could ever dream of. Unfortunately, this gun also requires Gunslinger as without it, it feels very slow to fire. But gosh darn it is the thing amazing in combat. Back on the game first released, it was actually so OP they had to nerf it to make other guns useful at all. Very creepy looking weapon that might not deal the most damage anymore, but really comes in handy for many different fights. A tier. Alpha Omega is a fusion rifle that feels a bit like a pulse rifle. It charges up and then fires several bullets at a time. The gun has a bad fire rate, bad reload, and just okay damage. In fact, even with the sequence shot mutator to buff it, the reload speed still makes it horrible for range damage. And that's where I stand, it's a bad gun for range damage. 
But who cares about that when you could create the best mod spam crit build in the game? Alpha Omega's mod has very low requirement, three charges and can refund its own energy on kills, also granting itself a damage buff or extra brands used and it's very easy to spam. The best way to use it is to pair it with Helix on your other gun. Do this and both have really high crit chance, high damage, and they don't kill yourself or your teammates. The problem with many other explosion builds and even mod builds in general is that most mods kill your teammates. Large nukes, fire tornadoes, we've all seen it before, they're all unusable in co-op to actually have decent fights, but you still want that nice mod spam explosion satisfaction. Alpha Omega has you covered. Once attached to the enemy, it's going to explode after you reload or swap weapons, and there's no chance it's going to harm you. Much more fun way to play explosions in co-op, and the damage can get over 5k, which is the really high number that tells you something's working right. A tier. The Plasma Cutter is amazing. This is a beam rifle that has a lot of ammo and deals impressive crit. It does overheat, but luckily its own mod negates that while also granting the weapon more damage. Use Momentum as the mutator and you have one of the best weak spot boss killers. Hold down the trigger and watch the crit melt health bars. The reason this weapon's so good is because of the fire rate. You deal damage more quickly than you can with many other guns. So while it doesn't actually deal the most damage overall, it puts out more damage faster. The mod buff also lasts a long time, making it very nice for bosses like Venom, Annihilation, and Corruptor. Two downsides are it has very little range, so if you're not running the Hunter trait, it's borderline useless and really not that fun to use. And without weak spots, the near guaranteed crit just isn't enough. Regardless, I will say it's one of the most satisfying weapons to use with weak spots available, as the many numbers in only a few seconds looks awesome. And this weapon's very good with Nightweaver's Grudge and the Devour Loop to infinitely regen your skills. Probably one of the most fun ways to play the game currently. S tier. Crescent Moon is the best bow in the game. It has an excellent quest to get it, looks very sleek and elegant, and absolutely crushes anything. The advantage to this bow is the mod Moonlight Barrage, which while active has you fire two arrows instead of one and shoot faster. You also get a small heal back, but it really isn't that much of a factor while still not being useless altogether. This mod means the bow does twice the amount of damage it usually does, so for me, I topped off about 3,000, but that doubled to 6,000 because it's two arrows per shot, which beats Sagittarius by a lot. This is why the other two bows just aren't very good. You run Feyrin's Sigil and simply use high damage to get the mod back fast and it negates any thought of ever using another bow. Now, this item is much better on weak spots, but it isn't even bad for bosses that hide them either. Definitely more usable than most options. By far the best way to run this right now is with sequence shot as the mutator ramps up faster because of the two arrows and you can instantly fire the arrows if you also wear archer's crest. With bows, you can get crazy damage, but I think usability is far more important as they feel very different than guns and crescent moon feels borderline perfect with sequence shot to the point where it makes annihilation too easy. Although maybe it's not quite that good, but you get the point. S tier. DC is by far the single best DPS weapon in Remnant 2. If you want to deal high damage quickly on any boss, this is the best choice. You equip the Butcher's Fetish Amulet, Battery Mutator, Feyrin Sigil Ring, and Archer's Crest Ring. Now, activate the mod and use a charge melee on the Hero Sword. This hits the boss with your mod and makes every single shot from Deceit guaranteed weak spots for the next several seconds. Because of the equipment, you can deal thousands of damage each bullet and fully regen your mod in one single magazine, thus looping you into the next magazine to do the exact same thing again. Over and over and over, you have the perfect loop of infinite weak spot damage, infinite mod energy, and amazing crit. 80% of the bosses in this game hide their weak spot or don't have one. Nightweaver, Kayula, Legion, Shahala, Cancer, Magister, and heck, those who do have one might still make it a little tricky to hit sometimes. This takes away all the difficulty of aiming at a tiny spot and grants you the damage to end fights quickly. The one and only downside to this gun is that it has zero versatility. The only way to run this is with a very specific set of equipment so that the melee damage buffs the crit and then grants you the weak spot which regents the mod. But it works every time and if you ever have trouble with a boss, DC with a specific setup is the best weapon I choose to get me out of a pinch. Guaranteed weak spot is a very cool mechanic that makes the weapon more unique than most and I love it. S tier. So you might ask, what tops the best DPS weapon? Well, the most user-friendly weapon, that being Monarch. 
Being an automatic, it is very easy to hit enemies with and fun to use. The mod on it has no mod energy requirement and can be used to track your targets. Once tracked, your damage builds up a meter that grants the weapon infinite ammo and 20% more damage. Throw on the Momentum Mutator and it is the true easy mode. All you need to do is hold down the button and focus on dodging. No aiming required, no firing repeatedly at the right time required, no nothing. You just need to hold down the trigger. Thankfully, after the devs fixed its scaling, it is also now dealing enough damage to be at the top of the DPS ladder as well. One fight in particular that's very tricky for the top DPS weapons is Nightweaver. She moves a little bit too much for Deceit to be easy to use, and even Crescent Moon. And since she's so aggressive, she keeps you from getting all your damage in every time. Monarch shines in this fight more than anywhere, as it latches on and deals damage with every bullet. You can deal with her bugs and shoot her weak spot at the same time. There's so much flexibility offered by this gun, and once you get past the finicky, where do I aim to hit the weak spot, it cannot be beaten. Monarch is also one of the very few top tier guns that clears out adds very well. Dungeons are nothing because you can lob out a thousand orbs a second. Monarch is the most user friendly, high damage weapon in the game, by far the most interesting and fun gun to use in the game, and deserving of the number one spot on this list. S tier. Well, ladies and gentlemen, there you have all the main weapons in Remnant 2 ranked from worst to best. Like I mentioned earlier, I have hundreds of hours in this game and have beat the campaign so many times at this point. Every single weapon is very usable and none of them are completely worthless to the point where you can't beat a boss with them. But that being said, some of these are just way too good to pass up. Plasma Cutter, Crescent Moon, Deceit, and Monarch are all top dogs and definitely my favorite weapons to run ranged damage with. Be aware that this build I ran here is actually probably one of the best ones to use right now for range crit damage, so do try it out if you're looking for something similar. Thanks for watching everyone, and I'll catch you next time.